now we'll have an opportunity to learn even more about Hefne, so Anna Weber will tell us some more interesting thing about it. Good morning. Uh, so, in fact, my talk is a continuation of the topic of AFNIA, but uh, uh, in, on another point of view, from another point of view, that is that of the optical properties. Uh, the work is a fruit of collaboration between our department in Milano, the ETH in Zurich, and more recently, the Institut Lumière Matière here in Lyon. Uh, this is the outline of the talk. After a brief introduction about uh, nanomaterials, I will um, describe AFNIA uh, prepared by Solgel Root. And then I will uh, speak about optical properties, either after uh, doping and also in undoed materials. Uh, by doping with rare earth, we, I will describe the cubic transformation of AFNIA from monoclinic to cubic, and I will describe also the optical properties of these nanomaterials. I will also speak about um, the formation of the cubic structure by also optical inactive ions like lutetium. Then um, I will speak about undoped daphnia and defect related emissions. I will specifically speak about a double nature of an emission that is a 2.5 TV that is related both to an intrinsic defect and to titanium unwanted impurities. And then I will um, speak uh, about, um, lastly, of modification of surface defect by annealing that give rise in some conditions also to white emission. <clears throat> As, um, so uh, we started some years ago to study AFNIA uh, with the final goal to <clears throat> use these nanomaterials for preparing macroscopic objects like uh, optical ceramics or nanocomposites. So homogeneous and heterogeneous materials. Um, <clears throat> in fact, in both cases, the nanoscale, the nanodimensions of the nanoparticles can be um, interesting, beneficial to reduce scattering phenomena, light scattering phenomena. But uh, in these uh, first years, we were mostly focused on fundamental comprehension of the optical properties of these nanoparticles um, apart from applications. <clears throat> As uh, the colleague uh, spoke uh, just before me, afnium oxide uh, is uh, very important for as a high K dielectric for microelectronics. Uh, we also investigated a bit in the past this material for this purpose. But um, it is also interesting, it can be also become interesting for its optical properties because uh, it has a rather wide band gap, so it can host rare earth ions, maybe not all, but rare, some rare earth ions. It is very stable, it has a very high melting temperature, and uh, if uh, scintillation properties are foreseen, it is also favorable that its density is very high, so it has a very high stopping power. On the other hand, um, its very high melting point makes it very difficult to prepare uh, bulk materials. There are a few examples for that. This is one. And um, moreover, in, at room temperature, it is monoclinic, while uh, for the preparation of uh, optical ceramics, uh, in general, cubic materials are desired to reduce the uh, optical scattering in, um, at, a gray, at grain interfaces. So, <clears throat> uh, we employed this non-aqueous sol gel technique to prepare half nanoparticles. And um, after, it is a low temperature technique by which very small nanoparticles can be prepared. Uh, the surface of the nanoparticles is decorated by organic uh, species, and then it is possible to oh sorry <laughs> to remove <laughs> to remove them by thermal treatments. Um, here I show the XRD spectra 
of the nanoparticles as a function of uh, annealing temperature. We see that um, by shear analysis that the uh, nanoparticle dimensions are increased progressively. We start from two, three nanometers, and after 1,000 degree annealing, we have bigger nanoparticles about of th uh, 30 to 40 nanometers. Uh, here I show um, some pictures related to TEM, and um, here we see that the average size is quite close to three nanometers. And uh, first of all, we incorporated europium ions, and uh, we, um, so we uh, applied the, um, optical activity to, to our nanoparticles that uh, display photoluminescence excitation and emission characteristic of europium 3 plus, and also uh, radioluminescence. Uh, with the aim to obtain a cubic phase, we tried to increase the concentration of europium, and in fact, uh, by reaching quite high concentration of this rare, trivalent rare earth, we succeeded to modify the, um, the structure from monoclinic to cubic. Here, here I show the different XRD spectra. And um, here on the right are the optical emission modification. This is radioluminescence of europium doped material. Uh, we see, especially here, the modifications of this um, pattern uh, that are in accordance with what we expect due to the structural transformation. Um, in fact, uh, um, the cubic uh, structure is attained not only with europium but also with other trivalent ions and uh, we succeeded to obtain cubic material also for example with lutetium, it is here reported, by keeping the same um, dimensions of the nanoparticles and um, the fact, this fact uh, is uh, uh, nice for us because we can separate the, um, uh, the realization of a cubic structure by an optical inactive ion like lutetium and then add uh, um, different rare earth ions, luminescent rare earth ions, so to change also the color of the emission. So we can tune the um, structural transformation in, by one uh, ion, not optically active, and then have uh, the freedom to, to dope with luminescent ions. Here are some examples of radioluminescence as a function of concentration and as a function of annealing. These are nanoparticles before annealing and after annealing. The annealing removes um, non-radiative paths in the nanoparticles, so it improves the, um, the radioluminescence, while adding lutetium here does not change significantly the optical features from the point of view of the efficiency. Here is for comparison BGO. Also, the PL time decays are modified by annealing in a coherent way and also by structural transformation. Again, in a coherent way, these are the cubic materials and these are the monoclinic ones. Now, uh, what about undoped material? If we do not dope the material, we have the chance to observe well the intrinsic defects in the structure. And uh, here we have um, several emission spectra obtained under two different excitations. Uh, 4.4 EV and 3.5 EV excitation. We observe rather similar bands in the two cases, 2.1, 2.9, 3.6 EV and 2.5 EV, here and here as well. Um, but uh, there is a strong difference, especially in this band, the 2.5 EV band, because in this case at 4.4 EV excitation, um, this band more or less monotonically increases as a function of annealing, while in the other case, at 3.5 V excitation, this band, the blue band, tends to decrease. Actually, under this 3.5 V excitation, all the bands are quenched at about 700 degrees of uh, annealing temperature. This difference 
of the behavior of the 2.5 EV band under the two different citations suggests us that uh, there is a double nature of this band. This band is not unique. And in fact, this is also reflected in the excitation spectrum. Here is the excitation spectrum of Hafnia at 400 degrees, excited at 3.5 EV. This is the excitation spectrum. While this is excitation spectrum under the high energy excitation. And we think that in this case, the 2.5 EV band is related to titanium emission that is on an unwanted impurity due to um, presence, uh, its presence is due in the precursors. And in fact, we prepared expressly doped titanium nanoparticles and found the same behavior from the point of view of excitation. Uh, similar differences are observed in the time decays. In the case of the nanoparticle with um, um, high temperature treated and the titanium doped nanoparticle, we have a microsecond um, decay, scale decay, and uh, while in the other case we have a nanosecond scale decay. So we tend to attribute this first emission to titanium and the other one to a surface defect uh, that we suppose can be related to oxygen vacancies. Uh, preliminary scintillation decays are more or less in agreement with um, such finding. In the case of Afnia with titanium, the dominant decay is 8 micro microsecond. And um, in the case of undoped Afnia sinter at 450 decay, the, we have two decays, two decay times. Uh, the fastest one is of a few nanoseconds and the other one of about 60 nanoseconds. Um, uh, so we believe that um, in um, undoped afnia, apart the defect related to, to titanium, the other defects are surface defects because all of them are strongly reduced when we anneal the samples at high temperature, uh, leading to an increase of the nanoparticle dimensions and coalescence of the nanoparticles. Um, here. We, we, I display the, the intensity of all these bands under 340 nanometer excitation, so low, low energy excitation, as a function of the total crystal interface. Here, the annealing temperature is going from right to, to left. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that more or less all, especially the 2.5 and 2.9 EV bands, are well correlated with the, the, the surface, um, total crystal interface, while it's not so clear for the 2.1 EV band that maybe can be related also to some um, in other impurities in the, uh, in the nanoparticle. In any case, this large... Uh, uh, change modification of the emissions, of the several emissions as a function of annealing temperature makes the overall color of the nanoparticles to, to change quite, uh, um, in a quite relevant way. And um, specifically, I might say that uh, for um, 550 degrees annealing, we obtain a rather white emission. This is this point here. So, um, these are my conclusions. I, we have studied the dope nanoparticles and found the conditions to obtain a cubic structure and a rather bright emission from europium and also from terbium, even if it, I didn't show very much of it. And on the other hand, we are now studying the intrinsic defects in the materials and try to understand their, their structure. These are our preliminary data on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, speaker. Uh, so, well, it's time for questions. Any questions, please? Did you observe any persistent luminescence in the titanium containing Hafnia part? Uh, we didn't look for that. We observed the phosphoresces um, that we report in, in the paper, but in the millisecond time scale, which contains uh, the titanium band and also other ones. But we didn't look for persistent, I mean, hours, or maybe there is. <laughs>
Thank you. Some questions, please. Uh, okay, well, in this case, let's thank the speaker again.